guys, welcome back to the next episode of Enhanced Motors. And as you saw, that EK4 is being for a Dyna tune. Before you go there, I'm just going to explain a few things about this car. So last time this car was on the channel was back in 2020 when we got the car painted. Since then, we've done a lot of modifications to the car and got it ready for a cert. So let's have a look at all the mods we've done. Here's our final setup. So as you guys know, this car came with a factory B16A2 engine with the automatic gearbox. We decided to pull that out and start working on the engine bay and upgrading the running gear. So uh, first thing you'll notice is that the engine bay is a lot more shiny because we've got that resprayed uh, with the factory color. We've got a complete 1996 spec Integra Type R running gear. So we've rebuilt the motor from top to bottom using Honda Genuine parts. We've got the 96 spec gearbox with the Syncretic Carbon Synchro upgrade along with all the bearings. We've got the Skunk 2 headers with the full exhaust, which I'll show you guys shortly. We've got the factory airbox still in here with the Canon panel filter upgrade. We've got the stock um, intake manifold. We've got the Speed Factory two port catch can. Helps with the breathing for the crankcase. We've got the Ultra Racing two point strut brace that has been powder coated black. Uh, we've also got the Tain Monoflex coilovers in here. Um, I managed to run these instead of the bulk clubs I had before because these are running a 69 kg spring rate where the butter clubs were I think 10 and 8 they're a little bit softer so they're bouncy but these are a lot more stiff that way I can run the height that I want we've also got the uh, inner rim mounts, billet mounts all around managed to get all the belts done, timing belt done, water pump done um, got a Phoenix radiator here and a second hand condenser I was managed to um, get from Honda directly they had a spare one lying around and there you guys have it Apart from this, um, we've got a few more things to show underneath. Let's have a look at that now. Right guys, we've got the car up on the hoist. Let's have a look underneath. We've got the Skunk 2 V2 headers here. They set it out higher um, compared to the V1s, closer to the oil pan. Uh, so if you have a Morris or something, you need to run the V1 header, which come down a little bit lower from here, and then go back to the collector. So that's what we're running in this one. So you get ground clearance. Uh, we've got the uh, baffle plate welded into the sump here and what I've also done is there's some rivets on top of this pan on the B-series. I've grinded them down flat and then uh, softened it up with a wiring brush and then I've uh, put a sealant and installed this directly onto the bottom of the block. The reason I did this is to uh, delete the uh, sump gasket because it leaks a lot and this way it's pretty solid up on the block. That way there's no leaks at all. So there's our setup at the front all painted nicely let's have a look at the front um, callovers the monoflex um, 16 kg fronts along with the Sun 2 pro series cam arms now let's have a look closely you can see the allen keys are facing down that way it makes it easier for us to adjust the camera on this um, on the v machine so there you guys have it on the front let's keep uh, going to the back now we've got the hard race shifter link bush here Full two and a half inch exhaust system with two resonators under the hard bush. We've got the rear callovers here, 9 kg, and they came with keeper springs already, so I don't have to buy spares. We've got the hard race rear cam arms as well. And let's follow the exhaust back to a Jasma muffler with the HKA tip. And that's our full setup. The rear has also been undercoated, and this is what it looks like. Now I'll show you guys what we've got inside the cabin, then we'll go from there. Right guys, we've got the car back on the floor, and before we go for our dyno, there's one last thing I want to show you guys. It's going to be my shifter setup here. So um, I actually uh, went on the Speed Science website and ran through a circuit hero shift plate in silver. And because this car has a black interior, I decided to hunt for a black one and ran into the hybrid racing shifter plate in black and ended up getting the hybrid racing shift knob along with it to match it up and a blocks dual bend short shifter and the reason about the shifter is because this one that I had in there the original one you can see it's a little bit thicker than the one I've got and it also has a lot less curve it's really slight curve not much so what happens is every time I put it into first it will hit over here and every time I put it into reverse it would hit down here so with this one being a lot more thinner and more curve i can clear every single gear without a problem and uh and there i'll show you the bottom we've got the tunnel cut plate 
down there and where the shifter ball push goes right over here what i did is i managed to get a hole saw and get a hole just a little bit bigger than this drilled up in there and put this big grommet piece around it that way no heat comes into the cabin and as long as there's no heat coming in the cabin we won't have any issues for soot and i got this whole thing certified as it is now let's go for a dunder tune Okay guys, we're back from the dyno. We got the piston ring set on the dyno and got the car tuned at the same time. Let's have a look at the power numbers. This is the dyno sheet. We managed to get 127 kilowatt at the wheels with 152 newton meters of torque. Those are pretty good numbers for a fairly stock setup. And if you guys like the video, make sure you guys share, subscribe, and follow our channel for more content. See you guys next time.